Good morning. It's 5 a.m. on a Monday. I'm about to start my second rotation of lawns for the month. I probably look like crap, but we got some stuff to talk about. So you might be noticing the office is a little empty. We'll get into that as well as an update on the Kickstarter at the end of the video. So Nikita just a few minutes ago, well, an hour ago now, posted a image on Twitter. And it would turn out that a model for an AK dust cover in Arena Breakout is the exact same, what I would assume here, I know you're not supposed to, but it looks confirmation bias it looks like it's the same exact polygon count and if you guys remember in one of my earlier videos i told you that battle state scans every weapon in the game we proved that recently with the knife that people accused battle state of lifting off of an asset store and we found out that they did not they create all of their own guns every single part for a gun all of it together so that they can work in tandem with the animations they have that are really good, even though some still need to be updated. This really isn't surprising to me. When I saw the other streamers playing Arena Breakout, I noticed that the guns look similar. And you could say like, well, what do you mean? Like an M4 in any other game is going to look similar. And that's very true. However, game developers usually have their own twist they put on things. Call of Duty likes to make their guns, even in their default state, look like that soldier had that gun for a while. It's dusty. It's got calligraphy to it. And it just doesn't look like a normal gun you could go to the gun store and buy off the shelf. Tarkov was a little bit different. Tarkov guns looked like the real guns. They didn't make much of an attempt to make them look outlandish or otherworldly. They just looked like guns. And when I saw Arena Breakout, I'm like, oh, they took the same exact approach. Those gun models look very, very similar. I did a reaction on my live stream over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 41, where I have started streaming weekday afternoons when I can, when I'm not too busy with lawns. And I was watching some Arena Breakout gameplay with some of my viewers. And not only did I notice that the guns look very similar, but the animations. We were watching footage of Big Fry playing Arena Breakout. And during playing Arena Breakout, there was a moment where I saw that as he got closer to the wall, his character shouldered the gun a little bit harder before eventually putting it down. And I remember specifically back in 2018 or 2019 during a Tarkov TV that Nikita was explaining that this was something they wanted to do in the game because it was very unrealistic to put your gun in all the way just because there was a a fence, you know, three or four feet in front of you and your gun just happened to be three or four feet long. Let's say it was an RSS or something, right? And I remember him saying they worked a long time on getting that to work correctly and then seeing these lifted uh, battle state assets. It really made me start to wonder what else did they steal? There's animations that look similar um, even as the, I don't know if it's tab in Arena Breakout, but when you press tab in Tarkov, your character lifts the gun up, puts their hand in, in the pouch to simulate they're looking for something. And when they close the animation, the gun is then brought back down and the hand reconnects the gun with the gun in a very specific way. You can tell it's two animations trying to meet because once they meet, there's like a little itty bitty glitch. And if you've ever played Tarkov, you know, when your character puts the hand back on the gun, there's a little glitch to where the hand kind of seats itself on the gun because that's the animation all sinking back up into one animation. That's how it's made in Tarkov anyway. Well, when I was watching Arena Breakout, it was the same thing. That same little bug happens, and it's, it almost looks like the same exact animation of the hand coming back to the gun after exiting the inventory. It's very, very bizarre. With this and with the code in the past, uh, using Gluhar's name, Killa's name, uh, Sturman's original in-house name, which I, I don't I don't remember, Kajani, Kajini or something like that, which was Sturman's, Sturman's real name when he was just a loading screen, by the way. Uh, he was Kaj Kajini or something like that. Uh, when he got put in the game, they gave him a different name. I don't know why they changed the name. But what's also kind of rubbing me the wrong way is some of the comments. Some people are very okay with the fact that uh, they had some of their assets stolen. So the, so this one is uh, interesting. So this is the dong. And uh, apparently the dong is also similar. The textures are definitely different. Though they do have some similarities between the two of them. You can see where this uh, little scuff is down here at the bottom. There's actually two scuffs on the bottom. 
Okay, it's the same texture. Never mind. Wow. Stop complaining and comparing. Just make your game better. So it's... Or we're just okay with uh, theft? If this happened, I feel like with any other game, if somebody stole assets from Overwatch and put it in, let's say, that Marvel game that just came out recently that's like Overwatch, there'd be a shitstorm. But because Battlestate had a recent blunder, I guess that's all out the window. Nobody cares about that anymore, even though they would have three months ago. Listen, I think stealing assets is wrong, but if I'm being honest, if PSG isn't willing to take legal action, then frankly, it doesn't mean as much to them as their public stink seems to show. I truly don't understand what goes through some people's heads. Serious question. Why not sue or take any legal action against them if it's proven? I'm not sure it works like that with China. Can you sue a company in China for stealing assets to your game and then selling said game if you already have a game company in the UK or Russia? And these assets have been in your game that you sell as early access and have done so for almost eight years. Let's see what chat GPT says, what they can do about this. Yes, you can potentially take legal action against a company in China for stealing assets from your game and selling a similar game. Here's how you might go about it. Intellectual property rights. International IP law. Enforcing IP rights in China can be challenging, but the Chinese government has been taking steps to strengthen IP enforcement. You would typically need to work with a law firm that specializes in IP law and has experience with the Chinese legal system. They can help you navigate the process of filing a complaint and pursuing legal action in China. That's expensive. And it's, it's so expensive that it might just not be worth it. It might actually be worth submitting a DMCA claim against this game on Steam because Steam has a zero tolerance policy for that shit and they'd take it down right away. They've done it before. Oh, and in case you don't believe me, right off the top of my head, uh, SWAT 4, remember that game? Weird, it's almost like I know what I'm talking about almost 90% of the time. The other 10%, ah, fuck you. <coughs> Voice crack. But alternative dispute resolution, we all know what that is. Documentation and evidence. Seek legal advice. So I'm going to have cro uh, chat GPT cross-reference its uh, advice with, the, with an internet search. Cross-reference your advice with a internet search on the subject, please. So apparently the Pokemon company successfully pursued legal action against Chinese companies for a game that allegedly used similar assets to Pokemon. This case involving filing a lawsuit for copyright infringement and unfair competition, and they sought significant damages and public apologies from the offending companies, SCMP. I love that ChatGPT gives references with hyperlinks now. So you, so you can now see um, the source of where ChatGPT gets its data from. This is from 2022. This is from a publisher in Shanghai. I'm not going to read it, but chat GPT is pretty advanced, so I'm going to assume it knows what it's talking about. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. However, it's important to understand that the legal environment in China is distinct from that in the UK or Russia, and you should be prepared for potential challenges such as differences in legal procedures and the necessity of proving your IP rights clearly in court. Again, it's going to be expensive. So what do I think Battlestate should do in this situation? Exactly this. I think a name and shame and then dropping it is probably the best way to go because you've, I'm hoping, have proved that they've stolen assets, they've stolen code. I think, I, I think through confirmation bias and performing my own investigation, I think that they stole animations as well. And I think, just let it sit. I, I would submit a DMCA claim with Steam. Steam is going to check. You send them exactly what you have as evidence. Steam will determine if that is a lie or not. And that I, I would let that be that. I wouldn't go any further than that. I'm honestly low-key surprised that there's not like an AI version of my voice. Is that... Hold on. Is, is that like egotistical to say, like, oh, you think your voice is so good that they'd fucking steal it and put it in a different game? I don't know. I'm just being a little facetious with that, honestly. Yeah, welcome to the, to the end of the video, okay? So yeah, this office is a little barren. That's because this is the last video I'll ever, ever make in this room uh, on this property back in 
2017, I started my journey on Twitch and became a full-time content creator for the better half of six years and lost it about a year, about about, about 13 months ago, I lost it. Uh, the income stopped. I worked uh, pest control and other side gigs for the last year until I started my lawn company last month. Well, two months ago now, actually. And uh, we did a Kickstarter. And uh, I saw that the Kickstarter wasn't going to reach the goal in time by a long shot. So I closed it and I refunded everybody their money. So if you did donate, I appreciate you, but you did get your money back. With that being said, uh, this is a, a tough decision for me to make. It's not actually much of a decision. It's kind of something I have to do. It has gotten far too expensive to live on my own in this economy, in this political climate. It's a nightmare, especially with just starting your own company, not giving up on this like I gave up on streaming. This is something I, 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 I need to do. I can't work for somebody anymore. I cannot see the money they're making and continue to make them that money when I'm making nothing for myself. I need to build my own empire. Very much like I did with streaming. You know, there was one point where I was like the 56th fastest growing streamer on the platform and in the top 100 of subscribers and concurrent viewers. I know how to build an empire. It's just, did I have complete control of that empire going forward? Not really. This I do. This is real life. This is something I want to do. I want to give employees an opportunity to work for me, make some money, and then eventually go and do their own. The reason I'm like that is I had a good friend who passed away recently who was my boss in my early days of first leaving home in 2010 after college. And he made my my first real job, first full time, that wasn't being a lifeguard part-time for a town or something, was being a manager of a pizzeria. One of four or five that my friend who died owned. After a couple years, he fired me because he knew that I was capable of so much more. And he wanted me to go and do what he was doing. Running the show. And I never forgot that. And I guess it's taken 10 fucking years to finally kick in. So if you do still feel like supporting that endeavor, there is a link in the bottom of the description of the video. Excuse me. And that's about as far as I'm willing to go with that. It's going to be hard leaving this place. I started everything here. This was my chapter two. This is the big second chapter of my life. It's also the beginning of chapter three. I just want to thank you guys for being here for that. I'm going to need some time to uh, move. The only things left in this house are this desk and this setup, uh, a bed and a futon and some uh, you know dishes and stuff in the kitchen. So I'm going to need some time to get that all moved to the new place. I don't know how permanent the new place is going to be. It's fucking terrifying living with somebody else, having roommates, because you never know what's going to happen. You're not totally in control if you don't own the place you live in. See where it goes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Come catch the stream tomorrow. That'll be the last true endeavor of this office. Will be the stream tomorrow afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, whenever I'm done with my lawns. Thanks for watching.